Hey guys, how's it going? I had a request a little while ago about uh, making some comments about, you know, kind of like tips on what to buy for a van to live in. So that's what the, this video is going to be about. Now keep in mind, I'm not a mechanic. My limited knowledge, I mean, I think I have above average understanding of how cars work, but I don't, I don't really know that much. So keep that uh, as a, with a grain of salt. There's a couple things I do know um, and a couple things I don't. Well, more than a couple. <laughs> um, so I think this is kind of like two, two or three different categories. One of them is when, where to buy the van. For me, I always go to Craigslist or Kijiji or Classifieds because there's no fees. Um, there's no baloney with uh, used car dealerships. And when I almost bought this van, um, or well, when I did buy this van, I looked at a dealership. And for the same van, same year, make and model, same amount of kilometers, they wanted $5,000 more. Exact same van. And that's just the sticker price. So once you get there, they're going to try to add all these other fees and no oh, they gotta pay this you gotta pay for your formats and you gotta pay for that no 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 craigslist um you have a lot more ability to negotiate and chances are the price the guy is asking is kind of like his top price and you can talk him down i've talked people down quite a bit over the years of buying and selling cars and i usually will go as low as I think they will go and then go up from there. So for example, the white um, Chevy uh, 2001 high top van that I had, they originally had it priced at like uh, $9,000 I think. And I ended up paying 90, no, 6,800. So he goes, I, I, when I was there, I said, okay, well, I wanna buy the van. However, it depends on the price. What's the lowest price you can do? And he said 7000 And so he already dropped the price significantly. And I said, okay, well, I'll offer you 6800 <laughs> Because he says that's his lower price. I'm going to try to go a little lower. <laughs> and he said, okay, 200 bucks, not a big deal. So yeah, the Craigslist is always going to be a lot more room for negotiation. So that kind of covers where I buy vehicles from. I always do the classified thing, private buyers. Another topic of like uh, tips on buying a van is being very particular about what van you're buying. Um, for me, I kind of get my idea about what I want to buy and then I focus specifically on that. For example, when I used to drive a car, I would only buy either Toyota or a Honda, and usually I'd buy a Honda Civic because there's so many of them around. So if you go on Craigslist, there's literally like in Vancouver, there's like, I don't know, at least a thousand ads a day, if it seems like anyway, lots of ads being posted every day for new cars or new cars for sale, I should say, or used cars for sale, I should say. So what I do is I um, I just search Honda Civic in the year that I want, um, and then I, you know the price that I'm looking for, and then it'll usually have ten or so hits that'll come up, and then I will take it from there and start phoning people and getting a feel for who's selling what and kind of reading them and seeing. If, I, if any red flags come up, they seem like they're not trustworthy or they're not really that interested in selling it. Um, they're just trying to get rid of you or they're just... If they're not motivated to sell, then it's a waste of time. You get there and the, the wife has the keys or something's happening or you, you can't see the car for whatever reason because they're not really serious about selling it. So you got to kind of weed them out in the phone call, decide who's really wor worth spending your time on to see. <clears throat> so in terms of vans for me um, I know certain things I like about certain kinds of vans I know that the Chevy and the Dodge vans are easier to build out because the walls 
the walls are more straight. Where if you look at a Ford um, E150 or E250, they have all these little ridges in there that protect the walls. So if you're like driving a forklift in with a pallet, you don't bash the side of the wall and it reinforces the wall or whatever in case of a car accident. But they're all weird. And I, I already did it once in my very first van. And it was a real pain in the neck to build around it with all the insulation and furring strips. So really the Dodge vans are the best. They just have straight all the way. And the Chevy vans are pretty good too. So in terms of ease of build, I will always choose a, a Chevy or a Dodge. Now each of these vans often have their little idiosyncrasies and there's something going on with them. Like with the Ford vans, they have this issue of certain years where they didn't add enough threads to the spark plug thingamajigger and the engine will actually spit out a spark plug. And then that's a huge expense to fix. I'm not sure exactly what year that was, but it went from a certain year to a certain year where there's a, a design flaw in the engine. So there, therefore, I know already I'm not going to even entertain the idea of looking at one of those vans. It's, it's out of the question. So what I would do is I would do your due diligence and research uh, different vans, what potential issues they have, and then... Um, when you go to look at the van, see if that particular van has any of those issues. Like for example, uh, I know the Honda Odyssey before 2007 they had huge transmission issues. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to check out the transmission and I'm going to ask the guy and I'll make sure I kind of read his body language, see how his eyes move. Um, you know, because if you look to the left, I think. That means you're accessing your um, creativity side of your brain, which means they could be lying. So there's all tricks, these tricks you can do to read people to see if they're lying or they're being truthful. Um, so making good eye contact is really important about that. And uh, going through gut instinct, I find my gut instinct usually helps a lot whether I can trust the person or not.